What's his name again? Cooper. 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 Come on, buddy. <laughs> Sit. <laughs> Sit. <laughs> so in my experience, it's it's easy to tell that Cooper is, is very fearful of me and not truly aggressive. So I don't recommend anybody just going to grab the leash. This is my first session with Cooper. However, I could tell immediately that the way that he's barking, the way that he's standing, the tone of his bark is, is all fear-based. And so I knew that if I could go up and just safely transition the leash to me and get going with him and use my momentum to move forward, he would be fine with me and he wouldn't try to go after me. So I don't recommend doing that at home, but the reason why I took the leash and why it looked so clean is because he's actually a fearful dog and he's not truly aggressive. I'm gonna try to calm him down, okay? Yeah. Cooper, come. So Cooper's a very young German Shepherd that is lacking security. Um, he hasn't been handled by anybody who really is giving him any confidence building skills. Um, and, and too many people have been focusing with this dog on training instead of confidence building and actually being a confident, balanced dog. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hang out with him for a little bit and I'm going to work with him and just kind of calm him down and let him know that I'm here to help and I'm going to help him. And I'm going to just pop a little aggressive dog up top to show you the difference of a true aggression case versus Cooper who's just barking through the muzzle repeatedly. Um, and you can tell the difference the way that they present themselves of the aggression and uh, I'll have you take a look at that just so you know exactly what I'm talking about. So I'm just going to take the wheel a little bit and work with Cooper and just let him know that uh, I know what I'm doing and give him a little bit of security uh, in our relationship and let him know that I can handle him and um, a lot of what, what handling insecure dogs really comes down to is just kind of putting them in their place a little bit sometimes and as you see here I'm moving him around with my body just to let him know that um, I know what I'm doing and he doesn't have to worry as much as he normally would. So, I think he's just a very insecure dog. Just needs somebody who knows what they're doing. That's it. That's all there is to it. Um, so, regardless of what you guys want to do with him, he just needs somebody to step up and be a handler. So, a lot of the training you should have been doing, or you should be doing, has nothing to do with the dog. It has everything to do with you. Okay? So, you see... And so if you've followed me along anywhere in my, in my career or you're just uh, tuning in and watching the progress and some of the dogs that we work with, um, my big thing is, is it's always usually the handler that's messing up. Um, and so here I am just going through the handling skills that the owner will need to comfortably and responsibly handle this um, loaded gun of a dog, if you will. And so this is what I'm doing here. And so what I'm teaching the handler, and as you can tell, the dog completely starts to just lose it, right? Because let's, let's, I mean, let's really look at the situation here. The dog is absolutely not secure with the owner. And you can see that, that the dog is really just trying to get away. Now, when I was working with the dog, he was comfortable with me, but not 100% comfortable. As soon as we transitioned back to the handler, the dog completely just shut down and wanted to go to the sidelines. 
and so for me, um, you know, it's 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 difficult for me to, to watch some of this stuff because the dog comes in as this, um, you know, a quote unquote aggressive dog and all these things, and I get the dog and handle him, and he's beautiful and he works great. Uh, we immediately transition the dog to the actual owner, and the dog just completely shuts down, and that's hard for me to watch because it's very clear to me that the dog is telling us clear signs of what needs to happen. Um, and so we're gonna move forward with the dog and, and really just try to teach the handler how to control what she has. So you're gonna work him again. Now if he, if he goes out like that, you just hold your ground and tell him to come, okay? Go ahead, start walking. Got it? Good. Come back this way. Release your pressure on them. There. Nice and relaxed. Put your arm down all the way. There you go. That's how you need to be right there. Good boy. Good job, buddy. Good boy. Okay, now you're going to let him out a little bit and go the other way. Tell him to come. Yep, tell him to come. Hold on to him. There you go. Now walk. Yep, walk. Just move forward. There you go. Good. So see, he wins those. He's strong. He's strong for anybody. But if you can do it, do it. And if you can't, let him go, because I don't, I don't want to see you. So go the other way and tell him to come. Nope, nope, outside turn. Yep, tell him to come. Good, good. Stop it. So pull him back this way. Yep, there you go. Now walk, now walk that way. Walk this way. Just move, he'll follow you. So that's what you're dealing with, is you're dealing with, he's getting away with that stuff. Mm -hmm. So we'll see what we can do. Um, so give me the leash. Now you're gonna. Yep. Now you're gonna turn that. Turn the other way. Do the same thing. Yep. Tell him to come. Walk. 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 Good. Now take the leash. Back. So what's going on here, guys? Is we have a German Shepherd that um, has been bounced around from shelter um, to foster homes, and nobody can handle this dog. Um, as of now. And so I really need to hit a hard reset, not only with the dog, but more importantly with the owner. So I want to teach the owner that the dog is capable of working with her, but I'm also showing her that she's not capable of controlling the dog she has, which ultimately will set the dog up for success in the future because we'll be able to get the dog adopted out to somebody who can handle the dog, which will ultimately make the dog look good. So the correction I just performed on the dog was really just to show the owner that she doesn't have what it takes to correct the dog when the dog tries to lunge, go after people, and pretty much opt out of any, any particular exercise. So that's exactly what just happened, and I just transitioned it really smoothly so the owner understood exactly what she needed to do, but ultimately she'll realize that she can't do it, and we can move the dog on to a home that can control the dog. Now take the leash back. Here, hold on to him right there. Okay, do it again. Hand me the leash. You're gonna do the same thing, okay? Come. Turn. Tell them to come. 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 Walk, 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 walk. Ah, better, right? Yeah. I'm just gonna. Mine, mine, mine. Oh, good. So good. Go. Yep, this way. Come. This way. Good boy. We're gonna do the same Not thing, okay? Help. It's okay. We'll fix that later. Turn again. Come. Good boy. Now good walk. Boy. Good. Now here, take this. Just keep him right there. You're fine right there. That'll be easier for you. Good, turn around. Good. Stop and put him in a sit. Sit. There you go. Okay. So it's going to be about management, whether or not you can handle them or not. Um, but we got to start breaking these things. Like that, like these little battles that you're having with him will ultimately give him the, the up. And you just don't want to do that. Right. So, you can tell he's got a lot of his foundation, but he's very insecure with, his, with himself. So he needs to work more on in, insecurity issues, and you need to work more on your handling. So his foundation is good, he knows his commands, but he's not respecting the handler, right? And that's really not what we want out of right, a dog. Exactly. We want, hey, here's the dog, and anybody can do with it. So, and why that is, put him back in a sit. Sit. Is because we're, we're letting him get away with too much stuff. So I would much rather work with you for three weeks, work with him for two days, because we just need to learn how to handle him, okay? There's a lot of different options we can do that. If he's trained on an off-leash tool, we can, but right now it just needs to be about understanding. 
And so you have him, uh, yeah, keep him in that sit. Good, 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 that's good. You, you just have to be very strict with him and not let him get away with stuff. And you literally might face issues like, like right there where you just can't control. Sit. Sit. Good. Good. Um, but we need, to, we need to face these little issues because that's one of them. Sit. Good. All right, go ahead and, go ahead and walk with them again. Hmm. Build it. Build it. Uh, so now you're going to do inside turns. So you're going to turn towards me with your leg. Good. Go that way. Nice. Good boy. Talk to him a little bit. Good. So we got to make sure we're putting all this pressure on him. We have to make sure we reward him when he's being good. good Same thing. Good. good. Okay, come out here. Make that right hand turn, right? Yep, we're going to do that right hand turn again. Good boy. Come. Good boy. Yes, good. Better. See, that's fixed. It's that's over. So we'll put that behind us. You have an insecure dog. Um, who knows basics but doesn't know structure. So you have the, it's kind of like, I'm, it's kind of, I always tell, it's, 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 it's a complicated thing when you're working with this type of dog. But I always tell people it's kind of like the Goodwill Hunting type effect. Goodwill Hunting's a movie uh, with a super, super smart, intelligent person that lives in crap. My boy's wicked smart. No supervision, no leadership, no boundaries. So you have the Goodwill Hunting dog, which means you got a super smart dog that can do anything he wants, and he knows sit down, stay, wait. Like I know all of these math problems, but I have no structure. I don't know what to do with this. I have no leadership. Good. So we have to just make sure that we're we're. You basically got to be trained on be to, how to be a handler in order to work with him, and that's stuff that should be done, um, because this is a lot of dog for anybody, not just you. It's a lot of dog for anybody. Move. Go ahead and move forward. Move forward. Go ahead. I'm going to pull that collar up just a little bit. Now, if you take him out, he's like a bratty kid. Yep. And what do we do with bratty kids? We either let them be a brat or we fix them. Release your pressure. Fix them. Good boy. That's a good boy. Now walk the other way. This way? Nope, my way. My way. There you go. Good boy. Tell them to come. Come. Huh? Good. Huh? Good boy. Just release the pressure off a little bit off the dog. Good. Good boy. Slow down a little bit. There you go. There you go. Go back the other way. So right there, you put pressure on when you didn't need to, right? Right. So just go back the other way. This way? Yeah, sure. Good boy. I think she's afraid if she does Well, she's... A, she's we're all anticipating bad behavior out of the dog because he's big. If we were to be working with a chihuahua, we wouldn't, we wouldn't be so gun shy, we wouldn't be so flinchy, okay? So that's why we're doing that, is we're expecting this, right? Let's go the other way. Good boy. There you go. Slow down. Stop. Sit. So if you, so if you were to work automatic sits, that's fine, but like I'm not going to do that with him because I didn't do that with him. So if I'm, I'm going to be fair and I'm going to say, hey, sit. If he learned an automatic sit when he was a puppy, I, I don't care because he obviously doesn't know it that clearly, so I'm just asking him to sit. So just ask him to sit. Don't expect him to sit with you because we, I didn't work on it with him. So, sure. so put him in a down. down. Good. Good boy. Good. So he's calmer now. And if I were to take this leash and walk there and tell him to stay, he would stay, and I would tell him to come to me, and he would come. That's what he said. He knows his He knows that. He knows that. Issues. He's just too strong for, for me. Yeah. Well, he's a lot of dog. And so that's, that's, that's an important thing that you have to understand moving forward, that it doesn't, and I told you this in the beginning, is that it, it doesn't matter it doesn't matter if he's he's overly over the top for you in an excited way or he's over the top to you in an aggressive way. Either way, he's too much dog for you. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? So we're gonna fail the dog regardless of if he's aggressive or if he's happy right. because he's too much dog. Right. I see a lot of people who try to get into like personal protection ring or French ring, bite sport stuff like this, yeah. and they, they weigh 90 pounds soaking wet. 
and they get hurt all the time because they're trying to handle this big dog that they just can't handle and then they have to get out of it and everything else like that. So there are certain boundaries that we have as humans. Now, but, so watch what happens here. He reacts and I move back and he immediately moved back with me out of fear. That's, that's fear, right? So watch, watch how he bounces. Good boys, buddy. Good boys. Well, who's that? Is that Wally? Is that Wally? Yes, that's Wally. Yes, it is. Yes, it is, buddy. So, that first initial. That was fear. Mm -hmm. You see how he did it? Because he didn't do that at Right, right, right. So, let me break it down, right? So, and that's why we record a lot of the stuff, is so I can go back and I can show you, like, this is exactly what just happened. So what he did is Wallace came through the door. You're good. Watch, watch. So watch what he does. You get this. Right? So what he's doing is is he's like, look at me. I'm big. That's what dogs do. Shepherds, you know. So if you watch what he does, a dog that's pretty nasty and really aggressive won't even bark. They'll just go. And then it's over. He went like this. I step back and he's like, right back with me. Right? It's fear. He's insecure. Right? So you see how he saw the dog and he's Oh, 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 oh. And he stood right where he was. And immediately my instinct, because I work with a lot of these dogs, is to go, okay, tough guy. And then he went right back with me. Right? Yeah, he was like, oh, don't leave me. I can't do this. So he's being a shepherd. He's being an insecure dog. Okay? Um, who are you? What are you doing here? Right? I could, I could have corrected the behavior, but I'm trying to kind of like let him cry it out a little bit. Because I think he he's been he's been pushed a little too much. That's why he's not trusting anything. And so watch this dog come in. I want you to watch his behavior and what he does. So you got a fake dog coming in. Looks pretty real. Watch. So here's breathing. Oh oh oh. And then what? Watch. Go ahead and just run that way with him real quick. Good, come back. Oh, you're tough, you're tough, you're tough, you're tough. He's like bouncing. Yeah, he to he's totally, he's totally like, I'm tough, I'm tough. So bring it back this way. So here's breathing. What do I do? What do I do? He's insecure. He's insecure. He's insecure. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? I don't know what to do, right? Will you help me? Will you help me? Will you save me? Somebody please save me. What do I do with this thing? Right? So his, hold on right there, Kate. His initial response is to go, oh my God, there's another dog, right? And he gets super overly stimulated. You heard his breathing. And he didn't know what to do. And then I let him go. And then I let him get there. And he's like, wait, you're not going to stop me? So his whole life... Thank you.